Hello, Wayne from Talk Cars here. It's time we had a little chat about clutches. Um, when people add a lot of power to their car, one of the first things that starts to fail and suffer is the clutch. And the clutch is basically a surface that disconnects the engine from the gearbox. It's got a friction plate in there that bites and allows you to transmit the power. As the clutch wears or the power increases, you start to get slip where the clutch isn't quite biting properly. That's an obvious area that needs to be addressed when you've added a lot of power to the car. You don't want that clutch to start slipping because once it starts slipping, the wear and tear accelerates. So in terms of changing the clutch in the car, it's quite a big job. It necessitates removal of the gearbox. So most people would go to a competent mechanic to carry this out but what clutch do you choose? Well, we're just gonna highlight some of the common pitfalls and problems that you might get if you've over-specified your clutch because a lot of people make the assumption that a heavy duty clutch is always a good thing and it's much better than a, a lighter duty clutch. We've also got different friction materials, different friction surfaces. Um, we've got different designs of clutch as well. You get the triple plate clutch and quite a few different designs. So the advantages of some of these clutches is that they are lighter so you've got less rotational drag on the engine. It's a bit like lightening the flywheel. If you've got a lighter clutch assembly you lose less power when there's a change in RPMs or engine speed. Now one of the big drawbacks I found with a, a high performance power clutch is it's very heavy in operation. In fact, it seems to be either on or off. You'd lose a lot of that progressive feel that you get with the original equipment manufacturer's specified clutch. The other issues you can get with a power clutch, and this is something that really plagued me, was the cables and the clips in the cable assembly kept snapping. The clutch and the spring and the assembly and the release bearing were all so heavy duty, the standard cables and clips just couldn't last. And in the space of a few weeks, I went through about four or five different clutch cables. It was really annoying. We were actually on holiday at the time and I actually drove home about 500 miles and only changed gear four times without using the clutch. And that involved some pretty hefty driving on the M25 in stop start traffic. So it really required a major concentration and it was a major stress. If only someone had told me the issues associated with a power clutch, I could have designed a better setup I could have worked around it and maybe got a heavy duty clutch cable and clutch pedal assembly to cope with that. Or I could have just got a slightly less heavy duty clutch. So there's lots of different clutches available, different friction materials. And you really have to look at the power output of the car and you need a clutch that will handle that power output, but without over specifying it too much. There's sensible limits there to work within. So ask around on our forums, visit our site for a bit more in-depth advice on choosing a clutch, but don't get caught out assuming that the most powerful, strong clutch is the best option for your car. So thanks for watching. We hope this has been informative to you. Be sure to drop by our site, say hi to us in our forums.